Hi, so I've been working on building a CNC machine in my spare time for pretty much the last year. I've done a few small test cuts, but I've not really made anything yet. Since a colleague of mine really loves ducks, I thought making him one would be a great way to both learn more about CNC and test the machine. What you see here is the final result. I've also made a few mistakes along the way, which I'll talk about as I'm making them in the video. So to begin I just searched for a template to use as a starting point. I pretty much just searched for rubber duck stencil and took the first one I liked. Once I had my duck stencil I started a new Fusion 360 project and imported the image as a background by clicking insert, attach canvas and selecting the picture. I then resized the image until I found a size I was happy with. This was a really useful function that I just found by accident and I'm very happy I did as I really could not have drawn this duck by freehand. I am not that good of an artist. Once I was happy with the template size and position, I used the control point spline tool to create the outer edges of the duck. While tracing, I was also trying to keep in mind that I'll be using a 6mm tool, so I don't want to make too tight turns or corners. I went through the spline points several times until I was happy with the outer shell of the duck. As you can see, I've sped this up quite a bit, but I did the first pass quite quickly and then I went back and readjusted all the points until I was happy with them. When I was happy with the outer shell, I then proceeded to freehand the internal edge sketch as I wanted it to be hollow. This took a while as I went back and forth trying to figure out what would look the best. Mostly I was thinking of not making any part too thin and trying to keep all the thickness fairly similar as well as not making any edges too sharp. That inner sketch probably took me around 20 minutes before I was happy with it. Unfortunately it's easy to speed things up so we don't have to sit here for that long. The last thing I added was the eye. This is just two circles where one will be the outer shell and one will be used for the eye itself. Once I was fairly happy with everything, I extruded the sketch. Note that in the video I did 10mm, but I went back and changed this to 18 as I later realized I remembered the board thickness wrong. I also struggled a bit with the eye. Uh, I had trouble figuring out how to cut out the center part and then leave the surrounding part, but after a few tries I figured it out. It just it took some fiddling with. You can also see that I only did a 2mm pocket for the eye. I later regretted this and fixed that with the drill when I was sanding everything. So in the final product it's actually a hole straight through. I also used the render mode in Fusion 360 to do some final touches and see that everything looked right before I went over to the manufacturing and figuring out the toolpath. While doing the setup here I actually made a small mistake. I would have preferred to set the origin in the bottom left top corner as I find it easier to align once I'm out on the CNC. I didn't realize this till later and it's not a big deal as long as you realize it before you start cutting. The board I'm cutting this out of already has a nice finish so I'm just going to use 2D contour to cut the different shapes out. To cut out the different areas I'm using multiple depths of 3mm and ramping. This makes so the CNC just cuts in a spiral downward until it reaches the intended depth. This is the perfect toolpath for jobs such as this. I also disable lead in and out as they are unnecessary for this type of cut. From my previous test cuts I already have my tool in the system so I just select that again. It's a 6mm flathead. I also made multiple simulations with each of the toolpaths. I find this very useful as it shows problems early on before you get too far in it and especially before you get to the CNC. Now let's speed the rest of this up a bit. I usually go for manual tabs so I can set them where I want, but I've not figured out how to put tabs on surfaces such as this. It just won't let me place them, while the automated setting manages just fine, so I'll leave it at that, even if it doesn't place them exactly where I want.
I'm using Mach 3 to drive my CNC, and I find CNC router parts configuration that I've selected here works the best. There is at least another configuration in the list that says Mach 3, but all the others I've tried all dive down to C0 before moving over to the starting point, which leaves a nice scratch all across the surface of whatever is being cut. This configuration moves to the cut at whatever height you start the CNC at, which is exactly what I want. And now I've moved over to the CNC and loaded the program into Mach 3. Here I'm just testing to see that the piece of wood is big enough and that none of the clips holding the board in place are in the way of the actual cut. I probably should get something better, but anything thin works pretty good for setting Z0. Since I have a spoil board underneath and it's wood, it doesn't have to be super precise. I pretty much slowly lower Z until I can feel it holding the plastic in place and reset Z. Now while the cutting starts, I can talk about some of the mistakes I made, because there are two big ones with how I set up the machine that you can see right now. First off, the tool or bit is mounted way too far out. I learned after doing this that the reason my cut is so loud is something called chatter. This is something you will hear soon, it's an ear piercing noise that this video does not even come close to portraying how loud it is. Proper tool mounting is that the tool should be as short as possible. When it's as long as I have it, you're pretty much guaranteed to get chatter while cutting. And I can promise I'll be doing this better in the future, as this was probably one of the loudest things I have ever heard. That noise you just heard, that was chatter. The second mistake I made is how the clamps are mounted. They should be mounted so they are parallel to the surface. This probably also caused more noise and chatter as it didn't hold the wood in place as well as it could have. In the future, I'll mount it better. There are even tools called step clamps specifically made for this, so I might get some of those or just make my own. As you can probably tell, my whole vacuum setup is temporary. It's even hitting the clamp here. I have a dust shoe on the way, but the person 3D printing it is not done yet. Once it's here, it should hopefully help a lot with how messy the cutting process is and make cleanup a bit easier. As I mentioned earlier, I was not happy with the eye not going all the way through. This was simply fixed with the drill. The sanding also probably took longer than both the fusion sketches and the CNC cutting put together. Here the sanding is done, and I'm getting ready to put some paraffin oil on it to give it a nice finish. enjoyed the video. I learned a lot making it, and I'm sure I made mistakes along the way that I don't even know about yet. I left some comments about what you liked or didn't, or if there's something I've not mentioned I did wrong along the way.